butterflies. Humanity and insects have always been in a complicated relationship. But butterflies have been one of the striking exceptions. Butterflies are icons of change and symbols of fragility. They have uplifted up us with their presence and with their striking colors for as long as we can remember. But every butterfly has its own hardship, its own dark and dangerous past that included many dangers along the way before finally gaining their wings and taking to the skies. Today, however, we are going to take a look at the life cycle of a butterfly. Currently, we are in a small country in Northern Europe, named the Netherlands, with a small and modest population of 16 million people. While not a very biodiverse country, one namely colorful and striking species of butterfly can be found here on a regular basis. The peacock butterfly, a common species found anywhere from forest to parks and gardens. Stinging nettle plants. The underside of these stinging nettle leaves are carrying a delightful little secret. Butterfly eggs. These pearlescent little orbs, gently and elaborately laid in clusters, are the eggs of a much beloved insect, the peacock butterfly. Peacock butterfly egg clusters make an easy meal to hungry insects and therefore are always laid on the underside of the leaf, out of sight from hungry predators. Peacock butterflies mostly lay their eggs on stinging nettles. In the Netherlands, Stinging nettles grow abundantly on the side of the road, in urban landscapes. The stinging nettle, a plant, almost universally hated by humans for its ability to inflict pain, and a prolific fast-growing weed, is incredibly important for these butterflies. The babies have been born. Welcome to planet Earth, little ones. The first thing the babies do after crawling out of their eggs is to consume a part of their eggshell as their first meal. And then they will get to work. As the caterpillars start chewing on the stinging nettle leaf, they begin covering it with a silken web. The silk gives them grip and protection. Peacock butterfly caterpillars are quite social and prefer to stay close to their brothers and sisters. In just a few days time, their size increases dramatically. Already they have doubled in size and so has their appetite. Typically, they are found on the youngest and softest leaves of the nettle plant at this point, covering them with webs before consuming them entirely. Slowly, the feeling damage becomes more noticeable as the caterpillars move down the plant after consuming the leaves growing at the top. At this point, the plants are covered with numerous webs. When it comes to survival, these caterpillars choose the strength in numbers strategy. A female butterfly can lay up to 400 eggs in some instances. There are many predators that prey on caterpillars, so they compensate by making a large amount of offspring. As the caterpillars grow larger, their appearance will change dramatically. Gorging themselves with food, their larger body size has made them even bigger and a more worthwhile target to any potential predator. In response, 
the caterpillars are now armed with tiny spines. The spines make them slightly more difficult to chew or swallow or misdirect attacks from invertebrates. Their color is mostly black with white speckles and the caterpillars are often found in plain sight, sometimes taking advantage of the sunlight by basking on top of the nettles. Large groups of almost fully grown caterpillars can be seen defoliating large amounts of nettles in some instances. Their caterpillars are often seen in large amounts near the edge of tree orchards, roadsides, parks, gardens and many more urban environments managed by humans. While many species of butterflies and moths struggle to survive in landscapes that have been altered and infected with the presence of humans, the peacock butterfly is an exception, for their host plant stinging nettle is one of the few plants that thrives in urban and developed terrains. Spontaneously, after stuffing themselves with food for about a month, the caterpillars will spontaneously lose interest in eating entirely and begins a dangerous journey into the open world. The roadside is covered in migrating caterpillars. When the caterpillar is finally fully grown, they must search for a safe place to pupate. The chrysalis of a butterfly is extremely vulnerable, so finding a safe place to pupate is extremely important to them. Caterpillars can wander for hours looking for safe space to make their final transformation. Many caterpillars fail to make the journey. These caterpillars, for example, were crushed by passing cars. Crossing the road is dangerous, especially for a small insect. Traffic will claim many lives, unfortunately. But not only humans and their vehicles are a threat. A wasp is on the hunt. For a wasp, a caterpillar is no match. Wasps, generally speaking, are voracious predators with an appetite for meat. Their strong sense of smell allows them to track down caterpillars, then either by stinging them or repeatedly chewing on them, the caterpillars suffer injuries and eventually death. Such is the circle of life. But it's not its own stomach that the wasp is attempting to fill. No, 
It is rather their larva. A wasp's diet varies between species. In most instances, wasps feed their larva bits of insects that they have killed and chopped up. But the adults often feed on sugars from nectar, aphid honeydew or a sugary liquid produced by their own larva. In other words, this one is just trying to feed its own babies. Since the wasp would have difficulty carrying the entire insect, she decides to chop up the prey into convenient little pieces. And she finally managed to chew off a chunk of caterpillar she takes off. Poor caterpillar. The life of a peacock butterfly is anything but easy. Thankfully, some caterpillars survived the harassment and managed to escape to a safe place. This is one of the survivors. But wait, what is happening? The caterpillars that found a safe space to pupate are now in an odd position. They are observed hanging upside down. The caterpillar assumes this acrobatic position by using strings of silk to glue itself against the surface of the stem of a plant, or in some occasions, a leaf or a, of a plant, or even walls and lampposts. You see, a lot of butterfly caterpillars pupate upside down. In this position, Gravity will make the process much easier, both for the caterpillar and the butterfly that will eat close later. For many hours, the caterpillars hang upside down and can be seen making contracting motions. Their body is preparing for the next phase. When they are ready to turn into pupa, the caterpillar sheds its skin completely bursting out of its former skin in order to expose a new one that has already formed below the first layer. In this position they are incredibly vulnerable. As the caterpillar contracts, the skin bursts open due to sheer pressure. Below, the pupa is revealed. Interesting to note is that caterpillars shed their skin several times in their lifetime and that pupation is essentially the same process. Before the caterpillar sheds their old cuticle, a new one has already formed under it. The pupa of butterflies and moths, generally speaking, have a hard cuticle that helps camouflage them and in some, places, some cases can repel predators. There is, however, one catch. The moment the caterpillar is pupating, the shell of the pupa is incredibly soft and vulnerable. The caterpillar contracts, shakes, stirs and squirms in order to shrug off its old skin. As a pupa, it will be incredibly vulnerable. But there is good news. The pupa has a hard exterior, which is a cuticle composed of sclerotinized proteins and chitin. While this harder shell will protect it from the elements and small invertebrate predators, there is one catch. The pupa must harden shortly after forming. Freshly formed pupa are incredibly vulnerable and soft. The slightest touch can destroy them. The caterpillar tries to shed its skin as fast as possible, 
because once the shell hardens, it will retain its shape permanently. And therefore, the caterpillar has to get rid of the old skin while the cuticle is still flexible. The pupa of the peacock butterfly. Somewhat vary in color. They can be green, gray or sandy brown. At this point, they will remain completely immobile while they undergo development. For a caterpillar to turn into a butterfly, it digests itself using enzymes triggered by hormones before sleeping cells, similar to stem cells, grow into the body parts of the future butterfly. Cells in the larva's muscles, gut and salivary glands are digested and act as spare parts for the soon-to-be butterfly. Each cell is programmed to self-destruct through the activation of enzymes. Once a caterpillar has disintegrated all of its tissues, except for the imaginal discs, those discs use the protein-rich soup surrounding them to fuel the rapid cell division required to form the wings, the antennae, legs, eyes, genitals, and all the other futures of an adult butterfly. This pupa is turning dark, which means that soon it is ready to turn into a butterfly. The colorful patterns on the wings of the butterfly can already be seen through the pupa. This species is only about two weeks in the pupal form before butterflies start emerging. Welcome to the world, new butterfly. Quickly, it climbs to find a place to hang upside down. Once it has found a place to safely hang, the butterfly will exert pressure on its own body, which forces its body fluid to flow through the hollow veins in the wings. This causes them to rapidly expand and gives them their shape. Gravity also assists in this process, which is why they need to hang upside down in order to do this effectively. Freshly hatched butterflies are also seen quickly unfurling and rolling up their proboscis in a behavior that is called zippering. You see, the proboscis of butterflies is actually not like a hollow tube, as documentaries often incorrectly state. It actually consists of two separate halves that are connected in the middle through a zipper-like mechanism. When the butterflies emerge from their pupa, 
it actually has two halves of the proboscis that it attempts to fuse together into a single one by interlocking the zipper-like teeth. The butterfly is almost ready for its first flight, but first it must wait for its wings to harden. This can once again take a lot of time. In some instances, butterflies are capable of waiting for hours before finally taking to the skies. While the peacock butterfly is famous for its splendid colors, in reality, they are also highly camouflaged. With their wings closed, they only expose the underside of their wings, which is dark brown to gray and reminds us of a dead leaf. This allows them to camouflage themselves excellently. They can choose to conceal their colors by simply folding their wings together. Insects have six legs, right? But when we take a close look at the peacock butterfly, we notice that they effectively only use four legs to walk. This is because the first pair of legs is so extremely small, we cannot even see them right now. Butterflies from the family of brush-footed butterflies have modified their, modified their first pair of legs in such a way that they serve as chemoreceptors. In simpler terms, they use two of their specialized legs to smell and taste instead of using them to walk. Finally, encouraged by the sun, the butterfly begins to show confidence. This remarkably beautiful insect can be found in the Netherlands, the country where this documentary was produced. From early March to early November, making them one of the first butterflies in spring and one of the last butterflies in autumn. They are often found basking in the sun, their wings spread wide open in order to catch sunlight. Their brightly colored eye spots resemble avian predators and discourage birds from attacking them. Peacocks are fond of sweet things and in particular flowers. Commonly, they are observed on the flowers of ivy, thistles, budleia, hemp agrimony, and much more plants. In one day, the butterfly can visit dozens of individual flowers to satisfy its needs. The peacock butterfly has only one to three generations a year, depending on the local climate. The warmer, the more generations. Curiously, this species hibernates in winter as a fully grown butterfly, instead of hibernating as pupae or eggs. In late summer and autumn, peacocks will lose any interest in breeding and will instead absolutely gorge themselves on a diet of flower nectar and juices from fallen fruits and tree sap in order to fatten themselves up and build a fat reserve in winter. The butterflies then become inactive and go dormant until next spring. Also curious is that the males of this species are very short-lived and only live a few weeks. Surprisingly, peacock butterflies are monogamous. 
and females only mate once with a single male before losing their interest in mating. The monandrous mating system has caused the evolution of a shorter lifespan in males of this species. In polygynous butterflies, the male's reproductive success is largely dependent on lifespan. Therefore, the longer a male lives, the more he can reproduce, so he has a higher fitness. Therefore, males tend to live as long as the females. However, in the peacock butterfly, the synchronous eclosion at the end of winter will cause male butterflies to only mate once. Their reproductive success is therefore not linked to how long they live and there is no selective pressure to live longer. Therefore, the lifespan of males is shorter than the lifespan of females. In Europe, the butterfly is very common, even around human buildings and residences. Males of this species are highly territorial and often defend territory from rivals. Males mate with the females that pass through their territories. After fertilization, females can lay hundreds of eggs if the time is right, and the life cycle begins again. Life cycle completed. This was Bart Coppens with the life cycle of the peacock butterfly. Yippee, there'll be no wedding bells for today. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle, as I go riding merrily along. Jingle, jangle, and they sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle, and that song ain't so very far from wrong. Lily Bell, oh Lily Bell, oh Lily Bell, oh Lily Bell. Though I may Welcome to Bart Films, my new amateur documentary series on YouTube. Let's start. Hello everyone, this is Bart Coppens. Oh, oh no, sorry. I'm still wearing my antivirus mask, sorry, I didn't notice. Woo. Let me introduce myself. My name is Bart Coppens. I'm an amateur entomologist, a YouTuber, a blogger, a writer, a butterfly and moth breeder and I make amateur documentaries on my YouTube channel as well. In fact, you just watched one of them. For which I thank you, I really hope you enjoyed the show. But let's cut to the chase. I have a massive problem. My YouTube channel is demonetized permanently by YouTube. YouTube said that my content is not fit for monetization and they refuse to say why. That means that whenever I upload a video on this website on YouTube, it gets many views, it gets many subscribers, I don't make a single cent out of that. And that's a problem. Making documentaries is insanely time consuming and very expensive. On making this episode alone, I spent about $700 in free time and in equipment. It's very, very, very hard and time consuming. However, you can help. On my channel, I have a thing that is called crowdfunding. People send me tips and donations whenever they like the show. One of my platforms through which they do this is called Patreon. On Patreon, you can buy a subscription to my channel and in return, you get other advantages such as stickers, mugs and posters with butterflies and moths on them that I custom designed myself. But you are also supporting the free service that I provide. Me as a demonetized content creator has a lot of difficulty finding the free time and budget to make my very long, expensive and very thorough videos that are handcrafted. I do everything myself. I don't have any company sponsoring me. YouTube is not helping me. To have the budget to make the videos that I make, I have to beg for it on the internet. And that's the reality of the situation. 
If you enjoyed the show and if you want to see more of this, consider donating to my channel. Consider subscribing through my Patreon, but there's also other means in which you can do it. It's possible to donate via PayPal, via Libera Pay. We also have many other methods available and you can find them under the description of this video. It helps a lot. Behind the scenes I am developing more documentaries. I am making one documentary about the life cycle of the vaporer moth. It's going to be awesome. I filmed most of it in the wild. I am also working on a documentary of birds in the suburbs and the cities. And on top of that I am also working on the life cycle of several other species of butterflies and moths from my country. It's going to be a surprise. But making these kind of videos can take months and sometimes years of dedication and thousands of dollars that I don't have in budget. And therefore, once again, I am being a filthy internet beggar, but I have no other choice, I have no other option. All the funds I raise online is the budget I use to produce my documentaries and educational nature videos. Thank you guys for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this episode, I really did my best on it. And in the future I will be back with more amateur documentaries made by Bart Coppens himself. See you later! Bye bye! The Netherlands has many interesting species of butterflies and moths. And in this online web series I hope to capture their life cycles in the wild. We can capture the life cycle of your favorite butterflies and other insects in high definition. But it's incredibly difficult for me to do all of this alone by myself. I am just one small guy with a small YouTube channel. No company is helping me and producing documentaries takes an ungodly amount of time and resources, especially for a single person. On top of that, my YouTube channel is demonetized. In order to find the budget and the funding that I need to produce documentaries, I have to beg the internet in order to obtain it. So consider supporting my show and I will in return work my butt off to produce high quality educational documentaries. I have the willpower and the determination to do it but they cost hundreds of dollars in resources, time, equipment and effort. Resources that I don't have. And that is why my channel has to resort to the kindness of strangers to support it. This channel is 100% crowdfunded and not supported by YouTube whatsoever. So I basically have to bag my butt off to obtain the time and equipment that we need to produce wildlife documentaries. Therefore I will now play the credits, including a list of names of loyal patrons who donated to my show. It is their generosity that makes awesome videos happen after all.